Hi, um, guys, this is uh, the video for Art 2, no matter what block you're in. And you are going to be doing some kind of doodling art for your self-portrait. Today I'm going to show you a PowerPoint of different artists who have gotten famous doodling. It's not just scribbling on a piece of paper now. It can become an art form. Um, and then we're going to talk about one example that I created and how it may or may not work against the rubric that you have. So these artists I'm going to show you are um, some people who have made doodling famous, not just for their notes. Oh, and it's not moving. There it goes. Okay, cool. So this is Keith Haring. You will quickly learn that Keith Haring is one of my favorites, and um, he will show up on a test. So anytime I talk about Keith Haring, pay attention because you might get a test question about him in the middle of the semester or at the end of the semester. Keith Haring um, got popular about in the 80s. Um, he passed away in 1991, I think. And um, you can see that he does a lot of geometric shapes. They're kind of blob type people. And the funny thing is that he was doing this in college and in New York City at the same time I was in college in Virginia creating these animorph type people and he got famous with it. So we're going to go through his. Tomorrow you will watch two videos about him and that will improve your knowledge. This is one of his most famous pictures. Short, small, um, very simple. Best Buddies. Yeah, that's the one you know it's most famous. They put it on mugs, they put it on t-shirts. Okay, he is famous for him. His name is Keith Herring. This is a rendition of the old saying that says, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Obviously the yellow guy is speaking no evil and the blue guy is seeing no evil and the purple dude is hearing no evil. Keith Herring is known for bold black lines around his imagery. Here are some more of his symbols that he uses. Now when he creates a big piece of art, he will mix the symbols up. You can see if you look over here at this one, I hope this arrow is showing up. On the left, this was a long time ago and that picture on the left side of the painting is supposed to be a computer. In the old days when they first came out with computers, computers used to be huge and take up entire rooms. You couldn't wear them on your wrist. The man in red is obviously trying to rescue the blue person from being sucked into the computer. Um, think about that when your mother tells you to get off your phone. So there's my little mommy speech there for a minute. Anyway, so back in the late 80s, he was creating this. The four symbols on the right show up a lot in his art. The radiant baby in this is the top left, the blue one. Keith Heron believed that all human beings had potential and that as babies we hadn't quite figured it out what their potential was yet. But that is a baby on all fours and the lines are radiating out of him like sun rays so that it's his potential and what he could be in his life. To the right there's a white barking dog. Sometimes he'll have the barking dog that looks just like this. Sometimes he will have these radiant lines coming out of the mouth and sometimes they're small meaning the dog is just talking a little bit or barking a little bit sometimes they're very long which you then can tell that the dog is yelling almost this little guy down here is he invented that i believe it's that one when one of his close friends passed away so you'll see that sometimes in his pictures and this is his superhero character that he uses a lot of times so he used um, something called semiotics, which is language in pictures, a lot like the Egyptians and the hieroglyphs. Tomorrow you'll watch a video which will tell you more about that. This is Aaron de la Cruz, and if you look at, the, look at his behind him with the black and white, you can compare it to Keith Herron's a little bit. One is a little bit more linear, okay? Aaron de la Cruz is a lot more geometric and linear and less visual like people and stuff like that. Here he is doing a mural on the side of a wall. Mostly it's straight lines 
then he's got some curves and he's only painted only colored part of it I like how the lines are dripping down whether that was done on purpose or a happy accident there's no telling could be just the paint was dripping but I doubt that a professional artist would not notice that so again it's doodling um, which we usually do on our pieces of paper when we're trying to pay attention De La Cruz, this is him painting a mural at the Diesel headquarters in Italy, okay, in 2013. Again, he's got some curves, but it's mostly straight lines and they're connected. And there's no pictorial images there, no pictures. This is one of his on the side of an art museum. And here's a close-up of his. Almost looks like um, some of those symbols you see on ancient aliens. Anyway, shapes, simple lines, your eyes play on the base. If you squint at it, some things will stop, will jump out at you, and some things will recede in space. Now, these doodles really don't have anything to do with their personality. Keith Herring's kind of do, but Mr. La Cruz's do not. De La Cruz does not. It's just doodles. This is Takashi Murakami, if I'm saying that correctly. And... Uh, his are very bright and colorful. You'll see some Japanese anime kind of connection to his. There, when I want you to watch this one, it's a bunch of smiley faces that look like flowers. Some are colored in, some are alternated. Notice the balancing of the colors. If you follow red, if the red is attracting your eye, you bounce here, here, here. Then you bounce over there, and then you might bounce back there. So you can see these main red parts bounce you around. If you are attracted to yellow, obviously you're going crazy right now all over the place. If your eyes first go to blue, you'll see how the blue step back, squint at it. If I squint at it, I start here. And then I bounce up here, and then I bounce over around here, and then as I open my eyes, I'll move around because I tend to look at the blues first. The white, White is all over the place, giving it kind of a balanced overall effect. But watch the movement. Squint your eyes at it. One color will probably jump out at you, and then watch how he's used that color to move you around the page. Now, this next one is almost the same kind of motif with the flowers and the sun, smiley faces, but he's got skulls mixed in, and it's more of a somber color palette. So there he's in my bright colors, and here he's used more blues. And of course the skull, excuse me, kind of adds to it, okay? This is one of his in um, real life, life, life size. You can see the people looking at it, so tell how big this painting is. There is a spinner right in this eyeball, very bright and colorful. This would probably tell you more about the artist than the um, De La Cruz ones because here obviously he puts things in that pertain to his lifestyle or pertain to him. And I've never seen the color pencils in there but that's kind of cool or it looks like color pencils to me. Anyway next guy moving down remember these are called doodles. Barry McGee. Now Barry McGee is very mathematical in his. You can see from the patchwork quilts in the background and uh, geometric shapes, some of which over here, the white, blue, and orange look three-dimensional. This cube in here looks like it's three-dimensional. Is the green on top, um, or is the green on bottom? It's got a lot of M like MC Escher. That would be someone for you to look up. MC Escher does a lot of this playing with your eyesight, okay? So how are you looking at it? How are you seeing the cube? Which way is it facing? Now, if you watch his other ones, he mixes some overall patterns with some of the optical cubes. I'm not sure what RP means, and here he's got four characters look like they're going into a tunnel. So something to think about when you're thinking about your self-portrait doodles. I want you to think about what the imagery means to you. Um, make me look at it. Your rubric should say something. Remember yesterday I talked about wanting, you need to make people look at your artwork for more than two seconds. Um, this one on the left is kind of plain overall 
lots of patterns. It's unique to look at how these colors bounce you to move you to that color. Okay, and then there's this one's kind of muted, but still it's replicated up here a little bit. The color schemes, how are they moving you around the page? Uh, this is like an overall bunch of different patterns, but this one's got some kind of interest going on here. Why does he have four people in the middle of this one? That would be something that would be interesting to talk to the artist about. Think about what you're putting in your doodles. Um, the next video, I'll show you one of mine. And this is Barry McGee again. He's doing a mural on the side of a building. Notice he's got a template here, and he has cut the three pieces, and he just keeps laying it over and over and over again to create. Excuse me. Oh, my Dr. Pepper's wearing off. This is a Barry McGee one, and instead of just making it look three-dimensional, like he does in this one, he actually has created a three-dimensional piece of art. So he's got his um, grids and his designs in there. He's also got photographs in there. This would be a great self-portrait. Now, I don't know if those actually have anything to do with his personal life, but I would imagine they do because artists tend to draw or design what they know. So, hey, you've got the materials to build something like that. That would be pretty jam up and jelly tight. So that'd be pretty cool. Anyway, so three-dimensional patterns, and he's now extended into a three-dimensional piece of art. You can see it coming off the wall. Pay attention. I want you to notice here how the orange color, this red orange, is bouncing you around. That's the movement. It's balanced because it's all over the place. It's moving me all around the picture, but it's also creating a lot of movement. I can't help but move around to the orange squares. Notice his four people are in this picture, his four people. So as you do your doodle art, think about um, what yours is going to look like, what are some things that you could have in it. And the next video that you'll watch today will be a picture that I drew and we will discuss the rubric to go with it. Thank you very much.